Hello, freshman parents. Welcome to Virtual Curriculum Night for English 9. I'm Michael Polsonelli, and I am the teacher of the course. I am thrilled to be teaching the course this year. We have got, count them, 11 new faces in the freshman class. It's been great to get to somewhat know those students over Zoom, although I'm really looking forward to meeting them in person, and it's great to see the returning students as well. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, that I will be able to see everybody, or at least half of people's faces in person in the near future. Um, so this is a quick rundown of English 9, and um, I am going to share a couple details from the syllabus. And don't worry, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you or anything like that. But if you ever do want to check out the syllabus in English 12, um, I've put it in Schoology. If you go into Schoology and just go into the English 9 course, um, uh, one of the folders that I put in there, if you go past the weekly folders, I have English 9 resources for the whole year. Um, and then there are some resources in there, but one of them, of course, would be the syllabus. Um, now, one thing I like to point out in the syllabus to parents is uh, this course has a theme, um, as many of our English courses have at Seabury. If students were around in English 7, we explored what does it mean to be a human. In English 8, students explore what does it mean to be part of a community. And the theme of this course is what does it mean to be a hero. So it's a wonderful progression um, if your student has been around at Seabury for a while, but if your student is new to Seabury, it's a wonderful place to start uh, with the question, what does it mean to be one of the best people in the world? How, how, do, I, how do I change the world for the better? So um, I always like to point out to my students that what we do in English class is not rocket science. Uh, uh, if you look at these capitalized words right here, we're going to read stuff, we're going to discuss stuff, we're going to write some essays, and we're going to do some other writing and some projects, right? So again, nothing too surprising there. Um, but I do like to point out that um, this, the, the reading, for instance, uh, which will focus on the, the origins of Western culture, um, but it is not so much like pleasure reading that you do 10 minutes before bed when, when you're tired. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, this should be at a table, at a desk, really studying that text, reading for detail. Um, filling out a study guide as you do that, which may not be quite the same as reading, say, you know, the latest Harry Potter or something like that, but should be rewarding in a totally different kind of way uh, when you can get done with your reading and sort of go, man, I nailed those details. I kicked butt on that study guide. Uh, you know, Polsonelli, bring on a reading quiz. That's the kind of reading that we do in English 12. Um, the discussion will be similar. I will ask students to, to prove what they're saying with evidence from the text. Uh, same thing with our essays. We're going to really focus on that structure of an essay and on proving what they claim. Um, and our projects will get at that deeper level of textual analysis as well. And, and when it works, uh, it, it is magical. Um, when somebody real when a, when a young student really unlocks a text, um, not just the gist of a text, not just the summary of a text, but really the, the, the awesomeness of the detail of a text, man, it's really fun to watch. Um, most of the rest of the, the syllabus I'm not going to cover right now, you know, um, uh, absence policies, you know, how to, how to contact me. I would say that email, if you need to contact me, is probably the best way to do that up until about 9 p.m. at night. Otherwise, I'll return it the next day. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, I would say on absences, just especially with the year of COVID still lingering, there's probably going to be um, a lot of absences. And so just have your students uh, communicate with me as best as they can if they know about an absence ahead of time or even as soon as they know of an absence just to let me know and I can keep them as caught up as I can over that over that time period. Okay, so um, with the idea that, that your students should be doing their reading, you know, at a table with a study guide, uh, no social media, no, no phone out or anything like that, I still think it's going to be awesome. My favorite thing uh, to do on curriculum night is to share the books that we read, um, because I think that's the most exciting. So um, I hope you've seen, uh, I don't know if you're seeing these titles backwards or forwards, but anyway, um, I hope you've seen this book out over the summer. We start with one of our summer reading books, Brave New World, and you might ask, how does that fit the theme? I love to start with this book, because this, of course, is a book where there are no heroes. This is what happens to the world when heroes are gone, when nobody can succeed anymore because it's too late. So I'd like to start with that, that downer idea, but then we're gonna go all the way back to the beginning of Western culture. We're gonna read some Greek myths. 
Um, and these are from Edith Hamilton's mythology. She's a 20th century author who just sums up the myths. So it's a wonderful way to get used to those stories because they're easy to read. Uh, the sentence level is, is very basic. Um, and we'll read, you know, your Hercules and Theseus and some of those, some of those old, old, old heroes and talk about those qualities. We're about to get into this unit pretty soon. Then we're going to stay in the Greek world and we're going to do two works by Homer. Um, now we're going to be doing abridged Iliad and abridged Odyssey. So we're not going to be doing the whole thing. This book is the essential Homer. It's cut the Iliad into about half and it's cut the Odyssey into about half. We'll start with the Iliad, a wonderful book about heroes in war, about the Trojan War, the mythical Trojan War. Um, we'll study that for a while. Honestly, by then the students are going to be a little homered out. They're going to be like, okay, let's take a break from Homer. So we're going to put it down for a little while after we read the Iliad, and we're going to read some, some Greek plays. Um, I've chosen the plays by Sophocles because you have some complicated heroes in those stories, some heroes that are flawed, um, which is really fun to study. And so we'll do Oedipus Rex, um, and we'll do a story about his daughter named Antigone. So two of the three plays that are in this book on Theban plays. Um, that's a fun unit because we get to do a lot of that out loud. We get to do that, you know, um, reading the actual text because they're pretty short plays. That would be a lot of fun. And then to round off the semester, we're going to come back to our Homer and we're going to read the Odyssey, which is the story of one guy trying to get home from the Trojan War. Um, so, so as you see, the, the first semester is mainly in that sort of that foundations of Western culture, that Greek world. Um, and boy, it's a lot of fun. In second semester, we will fit in our Shakespeare. Um, now, how does that work with sort of like the Greek and Roman world? Well, I chose Julius Caesar, so I'm kind of cheating there, um, even though it's not by a Roman author or anything like that. It's by Shakespeare. It's about the Roman world. So again, I cheat a little bit there, but there's this great main character in this book um, who's not Julius Caesar, actually, who's, his name is Brutus. Um, and he also is a very complicated figure. And we'll talk about whether we think he's a hero or not. Um, wonderful play. We'll do a fun project with that. I'm going to have to think about how to do that with social distancing, if that's still in effect, but it's still going to be a blast. Um, great, great fun with Shakespeare. Then we'll move on to what, what, I, what I honestly call like sort of my literary baby. I love this thing. Um, we're going to do Dante's Inferno about a guy who takes a fictional uh, trip in, into hell, into the underworld. Um, and it's, it's a poem that discusses that fictional journey. He actually does make it all the way up to heaven, but we're only going to do the, the, the bad part of the story when he goes into the inferno. Um, a lot of people, you know, when I started teaching this book, a lot of my colleagues were like, nah, you can't get freshmen to read uh, the inferno. And I, would, I, I took a risk on it. And this was, um, this was a number of years ago. And, and I have to say it totally paid off. Uh, yes, absolutely. Your freshman students can do this with guidance. Um, and most of my freshman students cite it as, as their favorite work. So hopefully that will be the case. And then if all goes according to plan, we're going to leave that world of old, old books and we're going to end the year with The Catcher in the Rye um, with the idea of what does a modern hero look like? Or, or you know, better, maybe the better term would be what does an anti-hero look like? Because that term gets thrown a lot, thrown around a lot with the main character of The Catcher in the Rye because he um, does have heroic thoughts. He does have really great thoughts, but he is the opposite of what you would normally think of as a hero. And I love that because then we, we come full circle. We start with Brave New World from the 20th century. We go all the way back in time and we slowly creep our way back, of course, to the 20th century. Um, so that, that's what I'm most excited about. That's what we're going to read in English. As, as I say, we're going to be discussing these books all along the way. We're going to be writing essays. We're going to be doing projects and things like that. Um, again, I couldn't be happier uh, to be teaching this course. This is the best job I've ever had, and I'm looking forward to the year. Of course, reach out to me if you ever have any questions about anything small or big in English 9, and I'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you later.